Well, welcome viewers. As you can see, we are going down the boat ramp at Terrigal on the Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. This is ocean stuff. We're going out in the ocean with the, the big guns, as it were, in terms of possibilities of danger. I'll let you put two and two together there. Um, beautiful scenic area. I've surfed out here for thousands of hours on the point and at the beach, along the beach, right up right up this coast actually. As we get ready to go in, I'm trying to uh, again mix it up a bit for you. Uh, and I did do a talk while I was um, winging, but it didn't come through, the wind was too strong. Beautiful clear water here at Terrigal. It's a holiday destination, world holiday destination, believe it or not, as we just get ready. Just making sure the equipment's right. Ugly, aren't I? <laughs> That's a Central Coast Wingers singlet. And um, hopefully this is really going to go well for everyone. Um, I spoke on relationships while I was out here and how having an instinctual danger to your life can improve it. Um, because it keeps your senses alert, um, well alert. I end up going in the drink here, I think, to try and get out. I couldn't get started, the wind wasn't right. Um, and I was asked around, so it takes me a little bit to get started, but that's like with a relationship. They can take a little bit to get started as well. Um, but once you get going, usually you're okay. And I spoke about awareness, you have to be constantly aware and reading the relationship as you go along. It's your responsibility to do that, it's your personal duty of care to yourself and the relationship and the person that you're with to get it right and to be on, on song, on point. <coughs> A little bit of mucking around here to get started lady in the background trying to get across the rocks. They had a bit of trouble back there. I remember. But we're on our way now. We're heading out past the boat ramp into the ocean. Now you've got the silhouette of the sun there in the background, which is you want to be aiming towards the light in all that you do. It's the shadows of darkness that pull people back into trouble. And you want to get out of the clutches of the darkness in your life. That's what you want to do because that's going to impact your relationship and you want to come as the most transparent and best version of yourself that you can be um, to reduce things that can sabotage the relationship through you. Yes, we can sabotage our relationships by a lack of preparation, personal preparation, inconsiderateness, and other shortcomings that can bring things undone. There's so many to list. <laughs> Just getting prepared, prepared there. Um, one of the things that you need to be aware of when you meet somebody is just to get to know them, but you've got to look under the surface a little bit to see if you are going to be dealing with a fader or a disintegrator, otherwise known as a narcissist. Um, these people do need supply and you don't want to be on the end of narcissistic supply. You want to be on the side of the relationship where you're building, building things that last. That's what you want to be doing. There's some swimmers coming in there too. I had to get out of their way so I quickly got going. Bit of a problem with the footage here. So it's your responsibility at the beginning of the relationship to make sure you're aware of what you're getting yourself into and who you're dealing with. Because you don't just want to be somebody's means of supply. You want to find somebody that you can build some good years with and at the end of it say, yeah, well, we did our best. I can't say that in the last two relationships I've had and I'm very careful 
not to be critical, but there was just issues that were out of my control. Um, and these are issues that you will get blamed for. People will, when they get trapped in a corner, turn around and blame you for other people's behaviour and things. And you've just got to look past that, keep going towards the light, count your losses and um, stay focused, stay on point, keep being honest and integral and look past these things that are happening to you. You don't want to be caught engaging in something that's somebody else's delusion or somebody else's shortcoming. Because once you do that, then you're caught in the web and that's what these people want. They want you to get engaged in some kind of drama that's going to make you look less of a person than what you really are. And when you come into somebody's life and you're determined to try and make something of it, you like this person, you're attracted to them, you, you're on the same length as, wavelength as them, um, that gives you, you and them every opportunity to build something real and something great. Because relationships are about, are about power, they're not about stress. Let's get this right. Yeah, there's going to be things where you need to talk things through and work things out with each other, but... At the end of the day, the relationship's not about stress and um, trauma and trying to work out what's wrong with this person and why is this happening. No, the relationship's about building one another, being there for one another, listening to where the other person's at, being available, being willing to listen and share and comment and, and provide intimacy and comfort to that person. Whereas a narcissist just comes for supply. They're just coming for what they can get. And that's sad, but that's the way it is. It's no point complaining about it. That's where your duty of care towards yourself is important. Yeah, the last thing you want to be going through is stress with a new partner. You don't want to be making stress for a new partner. And this is where we need to be on our game and need to be on point. We need to have personal preparation mentally, emotionally, spiritually and physically so that if we do meet someone that's going to be of our same vein. Hey Frankie! Oh that was Frankie going past. Um, you can then allow them to see um, you in a transparent way. They might not like everything about you. They might not like you. But if you've been transparent and you've turned up um, with the best of yourself on the table, there's not much more you can offer at my age. I'm 57 going on 58. I really am not at a stage in my life where I can be mucking around with people that just don't know if they're coming or going or not. There's all the jelly blubbers there. And in I go. Yep. Um, fortunately, I didn't get stung. I don't know how. <laughs> Look at them all. Um, they're everywhere. They're coming out through the rip. The rip runs out there, so it takes everything out with it. Yeah, you want to be transparent so you can turn up and bring the best part of yourself to the table for the person that you're seeing. And you don't want to pedestalize that person either. You want to have your eyes wide open as well because you want to see if this person's going to be the right person for you. You don't want a fader or somebody that's going to disintegrate. You want somebody that's going to last and stand the test of time and be there for you and be compassionate and someone that you know you find yourself attracted to mentally emotionally spiritually and physically yeah um, and in this day and age that's pretty well hard to find and we're going in way a little bit of a come off there hit some chop and you just start again. And this is what will happen in relationships, viewers. You'll hit chops and you'll hit um, things that you, you didn't see coming. And it's on me to get this right. And it'll be on you to get your part of the relationship right. 
and that's just how it is if you want it, want the easy way out in life don't have a relationship just stick with yourself i could stick with myself and be perfectly fine i don't need or have to have a relationship i just want some a purpose in my life where i'm investing in somebody else as it were um, with quality and quantity and reciprocation you want to be able to give take care and share on a constant basis not just when it suits you but you can't smother and you can't you know overtake the other person either um, in my last relationship there was a um, system that we had going on that worked really well where she'd come to my place and I'd go to her place unfortunately for her that got ruined by some hostile adult sons um, particularly one I'm not sure about the other one the scapegoat one but the golden child most definitely pulled the carpet out from underneath his mother in this relationship um, I, I just didn't want to tolerate it anymore the darkness see darkness has got a way of trying to overtake the light and if you buy into other people's darknesses and start entertaining their idealisms and and the way they're seeing things if they're wrong you're going to be um, asking and inviting them into areas of your life where they don't belong and shouldn't be at all they just shouldn't be there at all and this is what they want they want to not only triangulate you they want to entangle you and that way if they can get a conviction on you a domestic conviction as it were as in a way of assassinating your character or undermining you in front of the mother or whoever you're with the father then that gives them fuel and an ability to take you out that's what they want because they want the supply the attention back from in my case the mother and I'm talking about adults in their mid-twenties to 30s they want the attention of their mother I've had intense counseling about this because I just couldn't get my head around it um, and I'm not going to criticize it each to their own um, but it definitely wasn't a place where I belonged and that was evident in the way in which these people dealt with their respect towards the relationship there was none there just was none and um, I had to have a little city down with my my family which I didn't want to involve but they were wondering what is wrong with the situation and um, when the, when the um, cards were laid on the table the situation was not healthy <coughs> it wasn't healthy for her either because I think she was in a situation that she couldn't fix the best thing for everybody to do was to just pack their bags and go home leave everyone alone that was the best thing to do but with that said you move on you um, you leave things the way they are and this comes back to personal preparation it's your responsibility your responsibility to be aware to be alert to have resilience and fortitude and all the acumen that matter characteristics traits and things that are going to add value to you for the person that's going to give you an opportunity to have a go with them Um, when you get to my age it's not a funny laughing matter you don't want to be swapping and changing that's for sure and you definitely don't want to be at the mercy of people that haven't chosen to the to develop themselves I can say hang on please. You passed the day? oh that was the kaida when he went past before it's all out of sorts here um, You want to present yourself again it's all about personal presentation there goes another winger there good footage um, in a way in which produces power 
okay? You want to you wanna have yourself so well prepared that if somebody comes into your life, they say, where have you been? Where has this person been? You don't want to have a guessing game about, um, oh no, I don't know if this person's all right or that person's all right. You want to be coming in sharp, on point, prepared physically, emotionally, and mentally, and so that when you meet somebody, they're impressed. Oh yeah, they're impressed, man. And it's by nature of the way in which you live. It's not a false love bomb presentation of yourself. It's just by the way of the nature in which you live. But if you're just sitting around and drinking grog and smoking dope and smoking cigarettes like a steam train coming out of Hawkesbury River through the Woi Woi Tunnel, um, you're going to be very lucky to find someone that's going to tolerate you, particularly at my age, and I'm not sure if your body will function anyway, if that's how you're treating it. At my age, I'm going on, I'm 57 going on 58, um, and I'm running it hard. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to fight all the way to the end for health and, and a good presentation of myself, because there's a lot of competition out there, man. I want to meet... I want to meet someone. There goes the kiter, Dean. Good footage. I want to meet someone that's really going to say, look, you're my man. And let's make this work. And do the things that are going to prove that. You know, it gets a little bit hard after a while when you're meeting people and they're just making it difficult for themselves and for you and... You don't need that stress, guys. And that's where your awareness and your focus and your self-alert triggers and things need to be on point, non-song. And if they're not, it's on you. It's going to come down to your ability to understand and realize whether you're in the right place or not. You've got to be on point. You have got to be on song. And if you're not, then that's the level of which you're going to work with. And that could leave you very lonely. And then that really doesn't matter how old you are. If you're mucking around as a, as a you know, in, in limbo, and you're not making the effort, who do you want to attract? What quality of person do you want? Because you've got no right to ask for a quality of a person that's more than what yours is. That's not fair on them, that's not fair on you. We get what we deserve, and what we deserve is what we'll be able to cope with. But some of us are prideful and we lose our way, we don't understand what we want and what we don't want and we miss out we miss out on everything because of our pride you've been with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison I think, am I going again? oh, I'm going to go again, am I? oh, we're going to do one more lap I thought I'd finish then um, you want to be you want to be able to look back and say look I I really did present everything I had if it wasn't good enough there's really not much I can do about that that's my lot and accept it and that's what's critical about time you just don't have time to waste it's just not there to waste viewers you've got to make the most of the time that you've got and that's a lot of that will be preparation. That's all there is to it. We want everything immediately like driving through McDonald's. It doesn't work like that. That's why people are getting hurt and maimed and harmed and, you know, all that. That's not how it works. You have to do the characteristic, the mental, emotional, psychological and physical work So when opportunity comes your way and somebody wants to share their life with you, 
they're going to look at you and go, yeah, this person's made the effort and I want to be a part of that. And you want to look at the other person as well and say, yeah, yeah, you've done the work and I'm prepared to put my effort into you as well. And then hope to God that the other person doesn't fade out. Because that's the last thing you want. And fading and, and disintegrating is usually related to narcissism. Because they love bomb you, devalue you, and then discard or, or force a reverse discard on you. Uh, by triangulation or by some other means, they'll find a way. And that's just by nature. Drug use, alcohol, whatever's going to aggravate you, they'll use. I hope you've enjoyed the, the scenery here at Terrigal on the Central Coast of New South Wales, Australia. You can Google Earth it if you like. I've certainly enjoyed having you with me. And if you've enjoyed this video, I just pray uh, in the name of the Lord that you will get up out of your seat, get up out of your head, and make a real great effort to be the best version of yourself as you can. Just remind you, these are shark infested waters. Um, your Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, thank you for joining me. And bye for now.